Yes, sir. We are back at it again. Game number two of week number six, season number two of this Collegiate Sim Football Alliance. Welcome back to the fold. We just seen one game today. Nice job there from Mount High at that one to get the victory. But now we got to see Division uh, Division One team Central Houston Polytechnic taking on. The homies over there, White Hill University Project, Pokemon, however you want to call it. But these are the top two dogs in both respective division at the current moment. White Hill already got one victory against a D1 team earlier. And it's up to them to see if they can topple this uh, gang right here full of uh, bloodhounds. We'll see if they can get the job done in just a little bit. Let's go ahead and talk about the verdict at the current moment. White Hill still has a 12% chance of getting this one done. But you never know what's going to happen until it happens. You see James here. Uh, they're saying that CHP underestimates White Hill and loses a game that they should have won. So we'll see if that prediction goes through. Let's go ahead and check a few things on this side. Let me just flip right back over just to make sure I got everything. Can't be showing off all the secrets, you know. Um, but got all of that let me just double check the weather and once again we are not in a clear day it's going to be rain it's going to be let's see light wind there you go light wind so it's going to be also a day game got the schedule up in the um what's the word i'm looking for in the discord so i could keep up so i could keep it at the same time i've been kind of fluctuating with the times but we're going to make sure they're all good for you when we get it and it's game time here, let's go ahead and hit that play game button. I'm ready if you are ready. A lot of offense here from CHP, and I can't wait to see what they do on this one. So I think I said oh, um, Mile High was 5-1 and one before they won. Um, actually, no, I said they were, uh, yeah, I think I said 5-1, and one, but yes, they were 4-1, and one, and now they are 5-1 and one thanks to the victory. But we are here to see what, CHP can do as they play up against the White Hill University Pirates Project Pokemon hashtag Project Pokemon. A lot of Elite Four members, gym leaders over a span of generations, along with the professors doing their thing. So we'll see what Misty and the gang can do. White Hill's going to start this one off there in the orange. CHP's going to be sporting the white and blue look today. That's their normal away jersey. So Good luck to them as they play. Um, they take the carry to the left side for Whitehill University, a gain of four to start this one off. Let's see what they got going on here. Whitehill University. It's going to be Lieutenant Surge passing this one. Left side is caught by Misty. It's going to be down to the 49 yard line, and Whitehill's already on the move. Two wide out set here. Surge passing again. Middle of the field and incomplete. There's going to be second and ten coming up. Surge passing this one again. Left side. Koga catches it but not going past midfield after that tackle. A nice job there from CHP to get the stop they need. And it's third down. I don't think the last one was third down. That's crazy. But Surge is passing this one, and it's going to be incomplete. Now they get the stop they need. I got a little confused there. Don't mind my crazy self. It's going to be fourth down. CHP is going to get off of the field defensively. And here comes the Bloodhounds offense. I'll go over that offense on their next drive. Uh, make sure everything's all good to go with that. But good to see all of our Division One teams coming into the fold. We got some newer players coming into the game as well, so look forward to seeing them pitch across the middle and almost threw a pick to start this one off. It's Sean Bridges, second and 10 here for CHP. And off again, faking it is going to be CHP passing this one. Left side is going to be Vic Dotson. I think that's number 10 on the season. Wow. Touchdown. CHP one hit a quarter once again. There's just that's just too much speed right there. Once you get them in space, it's pretty much game over there. Demacchio makes this a seven to nothing game like that. Wow. That's that's what CHP has been doing all season long. Does anyone have what it takes to slow this combination down? I said combination combination down. CHP's looking 
nigh unstoppable when it comes to that passing game, but it's going to be Misty taking that one to the 29, make that a 30. And here comes White Hill once again. Pitch to the right side. They're going to give it to Chuck. He's going to get it to around the 38, a gain of eight on that play. It's going to be a handoff to Koga, but there goes Sanchez making the play. Third down and five coming in here for White Hill, looking for the conversion. Going to try surge here. Look for a man left side, caught by Whitney, but too bad for them. Professor Ohm is going to make a move back. They're going to have to do it again. Third and 15 coming up. We turn search, sending this one left side. Koga does make the catch a juke move. He's going to get around 12 out of 15, but that's not enough. And CHP is going to get that stop they need once again. Looking for another score. All right, we're sending this one away. It's going to be Booker taking this one up the middle of the field, too, around the 30 yard line. And here comes first and 10 coming up for CHP. Gonna be faking a handoff again. Quick pitch right side caught by Vic Dotson again. And he almost broke away that time after that one, but it'll be first and ten. Already closing in on a hundred yards. All it took was two catches. And it's faking a handoff again. Right side is open. And what else can you say that hasn't been said? Vic Dotson, FTW. That's gonna be touchdown number two on the day for that man, along with Sean Bridges, who's this combination is just too deadly. They, they found they. I guess they live in the same uh, dorm room, and they've been practicing this daily. You see the work there on the field, and that's going to be another kickoff coming here for Demacchio. Fourteen to nothing is the score. White Hill doesn't usually do well when they are down. They usually get a little dicey with their passes. Lieutenant Surge gets a little crazy. You know he's the electric gym leader for a reason in Gen One. First and 10 coming up here for the Pirates. The two wide out set. And it's going to be Surge passing this one. We talked about this right side. And it's going to be dropped by that running back. I think that was Koga on that one. But it's going to be second and 10 coming up. He gets a little dicey when he's down. But Koga's going to get hit in the backfield again. A.B. Johnson making the S.T.O.P. Third and 12 coming up here for the Pirates. They're looking for a first down. Keep this drive going. Surge stands in. Left side's open. Chuck's going to get the first down. Barely? Yes, he does. He almost, he almost didn't get it, but nice play there for White Hill to keep the drive alive. They're not done with this game right here. First quarter is only here, so right side's open. Whitney's going to get the first down. He did. She did come back to it, so she can make sure she can convert. First and 10 at the 47, and now White Hill's getting a little bit of juice here. Surge passing this one again. Right side caught by Whitney again. That Mill Tank's coming in handy. One of the toughest uh, Pokemon in gym leader history is that Mill Tank. It's first and 10 here. White Hill looking for another play. Surge looking methodical in the pass game. Left side, that's going to be deflected. And it's going to be second and 10 coming up. And we'll talk about this offense in a little bit. Koga to the left side is going to be getting third and seven. And they're inching closer to field goal range. We'll see if Bugsy can knock it through if they could get the points. But I'm sure they want a little bit more. Surge passing again. Left side, Koga in a lot of white jerseys ahead of him. He wasn't going to get past them. It's fourth and six coming up. Bugsy going to try this one from around 47. Kick is up and... It does get it through for 47. White Hill does get points on the board on this drive. So we'll set up another kickoff here. CHP is getting his ball back, and it's already 14-3. First quarter isn't even done, and they have a chance to make it 21 before this happens. Fowler takes that to around the 32-yard line or so, and here comes CHP once again. The, Vic, the Bridges to Dotson connection has been working. Well, they continue on with it, faking the handoff. Going to be looking for 
uh, Caldwell there on the crossing pattern. It's going to be first and 10. I think that's going to wrap up the first quarter on that play right there. So good job here from CHP keeping his drive going. But they still have some more uh, plays here. Going into the offense, they got Sean Bridges, Vic Dotson at the tight end spot. They got Falco DiMacchio at the kicker punter position, faking the handoff again. Had to throw that one away. But they also have Cameron Frost at the running back spot. Let's keep it going. Isaiah Fowler at the wide receiver spot. Chad two times at the uh, wide receiver spot along with Brian Taylor. And it's going to be sacked. Crash Awake makes the play. Make it third and 15 coming up. And we'll talk about this defense in a little bit as well. So stay tuned. It's going to be faking the handoff again. Left side had to throw that one away again. And that's going to be a fourth down stop forced by White Hill University trying to keep their offense alive in this one. But it's right now two quarters in, actually two quarters in, almost three left in this game. So White Hill still has plenty of opportunities and the offense to do some work. They've shown plenty of promise here overall this season, even defeating the Division I team. Faking the hand off the surge. Left side caught by Chuck. Juke moved there. I'll give him the first down. And White Hill's on the move. They found ways to get down the field. So they just got to continue on and keep on growing, if that makes sense. Surge faking it again. Quick pitch left side and deflected by that CHP defender. But Deshaun Booker gets a face mask penalty that will give him a first down. Wow. They did not see that play there. I don't know if it was from the safety on the other side, but got to keep it going. Koga takes that left side, and that's going to be a gain of two on the play. Set up second and eight. Surge passing this one left side, caught by Koga. Juke move, and he's going to get around four or five on the play. He's going to be third and five coming up here. And they're looking for the conversion on this one. Three wide out set. It's going to be surge passing again. Right side's open, and that's going to be a off-the-mark drop right there. Unfortunate for White Hill. Looked like they were driving a little bit, but they got to concede this one. Send it back to CHP. It's going to be Deshaun Booker on the return. His penalty didn't kill him. Take it to the 24-yard line, and CHP's back on offense. They stumbled a little bit on their last drive, but they have another chance here. Three wide out set here. They do have Vic Dotson out there. And it's his caught by Chad two times. First down yardage. And move the chains. Bloodhounds coming for blood. Two tight ends. One wide receiver faking the handoff again. Hit as he throws. And I think he was looking for that man Chad two times across the middle. But could not get to him. It's going to be second and ten. Handoff again. No, it's a fake. Pitch right side, caught by Isaiah Fowler, moving into White Hill territory with that play, and it's first and ten. Three wide receivers, one tight end. Looking for a man to throw it to again. Up the fake, pitch to the left side, had to throw that one away. And he had a few comeback routes there on the left side, but the play could not develop. 6-4-11 on the day. A third of his passes that were completed were touchdowns to Vic Dotson. Look to the left side. Chiquita does make the play. Gets around six on that one. And it's third and four coming up. Sean Bridges on another level. Right side is open and off the hands of that receiver right there. And that's going to be fourth down stop once again for White Hill. Looking for some points right before halftime. What a better chance to do it than now. DiMacchio sends this one. It looks like he's going to hit that cameraman right in the face. Unfortunate for that man, he might need a medic. First and 10 coming up for White Hill. Surge passing again. Right side and in double coverage. Just going to be incomplete. Second and 10 coming up here for White Hill. Turn a surge pass in this one again. Right side caught by Misty, the water gem leader of Generation 1. Going to move those chains nice and easy. Going to be surge passing this one again. Looking right side and once again in double coverage. 
I told you, when Lieutenant Surge gets down, his passes get a little erratic sometimes. There's going to be second and 10 coming up on this play. They're going to go to the run this time around. He's only going to get to the 40-yard line, make that the 41. And it's third and seven here for White Hill. Has more yards receiving than passing at the current moment. It's going to be another handoff this time to Chuck, but he goes nowhere. That's a tackle by Leonard, and CHP will get off the field with the final three minutes of this quarter. Can they take advantage of it is the question. Sean Booker taking that pass to 20 and not much else after that. It's going to be easy, easy coming here for CHP to get some offense back onto the field, but they need to get their passing game running like normal. Looking for across the middle, and Isaiah Fowler catches it, turns around, and gets the first down just like that. Move the chains here for the Bloodhounds. Taking a handoff again, standing in the pocket, beasted right there. That's going to be Byron making the tackle. Actually called that a sack. A loss of two here, and CHP has the ball once again. Three wideouts, one tight end once again. Look for a man left side, caught by Chad two times, almost to midfield. And they have nine, less than 90 seconds left in this quarter to do something. I don't think they'll be too upset with getting some, uh, again, the field goal if needed. Pitch right side, and that passes off the mark once again. Second and 10 coming up. It's going to be Bridget passing this one left side. Caught by Chad two times, takes that out of bounds. And that'll give them a chance to stop the clock, and they'll give them a chance to think about what they could do on this play. Another four wide out set here for CHP. Bridges passes this one left side and looked like that was off the hands of the receiver. Probably dialed up the right play, but could not get the pass going. It's going to be uh, fourth down coming up here, and White Hill's getting this ball back with the minute. Playing it will go into the end zone. It's a question. I think it will, but it gets pinned at the one yard line. That's going to put White Hill right there. Let's see if they could get something going for CHP looking for a safety. They're not going to send the house this time. Right side and deflect it. It's going to be second and 10 coming up here from essentially the goal line. Search. They're going to send the blitz, but it doesn't get home. And Misty takes advantage to at least give them some breathing room. See if they could take this into the half. 20 seconds left in this one. Looking for a play here. Surge, right side, caught by Koga. Not quite the first down. And I think that should end the first half right there. We'll go ahead and talk about the statistics and right about now. But yeah, 14 to 3 is the game so far. CHP has two touchdowns courtesy of the Bridges to Dotson connection once again. 13 for 22 on the day for Surge doing his thing. Um, Going into the team leaders, uh, no rushing to be seen. As you can see, it's been all passing on this one. Vic Dotson already with 150 total receiving yards, two TDs. Chad two times, and Isaiah Fowler doing his thing, uh, 28 for 32. Um, let's see, Leonard, Sanchez, John, two times, Booker, and Fowler are the highlights at the current moment. Good to see the user plays here from Sanchez to Fowler doing their thing. And let's go into the team stats really fast. Central Houston Polytechnic doesn't have the plays, but when you're scoring off a one that's running you down the field, who needs total plays? But they got the total yards on the lock, so that's all you really need to see right there. Two sacks on the day for White Hill University, mostly because Central Houston passes the ball a lot. But that's really about it there. Checking into the receiving side, see what the boys are doing. One target here for Brian Taylor, but no catches quite yet. Um, let's see. Fowler has two for 32. Dotson has three for 50. Chad two times, three for 28 on the day. And Chiquita also getting one right there. Defensively, checking a little bit more in the stats. Uh, Su Sugiyota Kayami got two tackles on the day so far. Good job from her on her first day. Um, going in a little bit further. Uh, John Carter has one tackle. Um, Booker has one tackle more doing his thing with one tackle. A.B. Johnson has one tackle. Looking a little bit deeper down the list, it's going to be, let me see, let me see. Cecil, well, 
actually I see that here. Sanchez doing his thing. Um, yeah, Sanchez doing his thing with uh, two tackles. That's D line. Uh, Leonard has three. And that's really about it so far on this one. Let's go ahead and keep it moving. I'm ready. If you are ready, start second half button is here. Once again, make sure you like and subscribe. Do what you need to do to get on the field. Shout out to all of the homies holding us down. And I can't wait to see what happens. Isaiah Fowler looking to take this one up the middle. Gets to the 30. That's exactly where it's going to be. First and 10 CHP. Going to be faking the handoff as Bridges across the middle of the field. Brian Taylor makes the first man miss. And that's going to be first and 10 here for CHP. Already closing into midfield off of one play pretty much. And it's going to be a four wide out set here. Looks like they're giving Vic a little bit of a break. Passing this one deep across the middle of the field and then complete. It's going to be second and 10 coming up. Dick Dotson back on the field, and that doesn't really matter. It's going to be a sack there for Crash Awake. I believe that's number two on the day for him. Nice job on the day. Third and 15 coming up before a wide out set. Taking the handoff again. Looking to the right side. Caught by Chiquita. Makes the first man miss, and he's going to get the first down. First and 10 Bloodhounds. Going to be a fake of the handoff here. Look for a man left side. Chiquita gets another catch, two in a row for him. And it's going to be a gain of six on the day. Well, six on that play. Second and four coming up. 13 for 22 on the day for Bridges. Faking the handoff again. Left side was open, but the pass incomplete. Third and four, faking the handoff again. Left side and dropped. Not sure who that was right there. Actually, it looked like that was Dotson looking at it. it looked like that was Vic Dotson on that play. Fourth and four. Don't see those too often, but hey, that is part of the process. First and 10 coming up here for uh, White Hill University. They're down 11, so still within reach. A touchdown on either of these drives can help their cause. Going to be Koga taking that right side for a gain of four. Second and six right now. Hand off Koga. Getting that to around the 20-yard line. But it's going to be third and five coming up here for White Hill. They've been putting a lot of situations like this where they weren't able to put the points on the board like they need to be. It's going to be surge right side and incomplete. Once again, CHP's long pass defense has been on the money. They haven't allowed too many plays past 20 yards so far. So that's what you got to do on those third down situations. Send them back a little bit. Nothing wrong with that. As Deshaun Booker takes that one to around the 45-yard line. Back into White Hill University territory with this one. Looking for some more points. And off notes a fake again. Quick pitch to Dotson for the gain of around six. And that's going to be second and four coming up. Oh, like that was a run pass option there. Could not quite tell, but that was a nice play. Faking the handoff again. Pitch left side is open. Vic Dotson, how do you do, young fella? Once again, number three on the day for Bridges. One Number three on the day for Dotson. And there goes another touchdown pass here for CHP. Kick is going to be up, and looks like it's off the mark, unfortunate for them. But 20 to nothing once again. Actually, 20 to 3, nothing to sneeze at there. A 17-point game in favor of the home t uh, the away team. Sorry. It's going to be halfway through the third quarter. White Hill has not found their offense here. It's been hasn't been uh it's been a while since we haven't seen White Hill not be able to do anything, but when you do go up against a division one team, it does make it a little harder for you to do some stuff. Even the victory that they won last time wasn't a great game in regards to points. They only scored, I believe, six. But it's gonna be first and ten here after that play. That's a good start there to get their offense ignited. Another two wide out set here. Hand off to Koga. Cannot get around the corner, but he does get a little bit deeper into CHP territory. 
it's going to be second and eight coming up. Koga hasn't really had the greatest of games, but has done a little bit. Surge is going to get hit, and Sanchez is the culprit for the face mask, and it's going to be third and one coming up. Essentially, with those penalties, you go you go forward, and if it doesn't pass it, then it just keeps the same down. But it's going to be a canned off to Koga and no dice there. And CHP, despite the penalty, they'll keep keep on with the strong defense. And they're getting this ball back with relative ease. Iris sends this one away, and this one is the beauty. Inside the 10, down to the 6. So CHP has the length of the field to go. Let's see what they got going on with this play. Three wideouts, two running backs here, faking the handoff. Nice pickup by the running back. Deep left side, caught by Cameron Frost. And there goes a deep touchdown pass, 94 yards to the house. And there goes CHP once again. I believe that's his first touchdown of the season as well. So good job. Shout out to Cameron Frost doing his thing. And that ball was running. As soon as he caught that ball, it was game over. Kick is up. Kick is good here for CHP. And it's a 27-3 ball game in favor of the number one team in the CSFA right now in regards to record doing their thing. I already know CHP was thinking, uh, thanking OCSU many times and again for getting the victory against Mile High last week. But, hey, that's part of the process. Not every team's going to win every single time, you know. It's going to be first and 10 here for White Hill. Hand off to Koga, not getting too much further than the 30. Second and eight coming up here for White Hill University. Surge passing this again. Right side and deflected from uh, the receiver there. It's going to be third and eight coming up here. Ten surge passing this one again. Left side and dropped. That's going to be fourth and eight coming up. And now will be a new set of downs coming up here. Let's see what they got going on. Iris sending this one to around the 27-yard line. Booker taking this one to the left side. And it's going to be first and 10 here once again. CHP looking to make it 30 points on the day. It still has a whole quarter to work with to do so. So let's see what happens here. Pitch left side, and that could have been picked off, could have been a damper on his passing day, if I do say so myself. But it falls harmlessly to the turf, and it's going to be second and ten. Taking the handoff again, looking for a man right side, caught by Caldwell. And that's going to be a first and ten set up there inside White Hill territory, so they're back onto the move. Three wideouts, two running backs. Nice pickup. Left side is good from Chad. Two times trying to drag a man, but he can't not get his foot away from the defender. But he'll take that nice gain inside the 30. It's first and 10 once again. And they go for a four wide set on this one. Looking for a man to throw it to again. Right side caught by Chiquita. Falls forward close to the 20. In the second five as we hit the end of number three. Ten more minutes left in this one. CHP is looking for win number six. And they're 10 minutes away from making that a formality here. Faking the handoff again. Right side open. And the pass just a little bit behind the receiver is going to be incomplete. Third and five. Three wideouts, one tight end here. Look for a man right side. And it's going to be dropped. It's going to be fourth and five coming up here. And now they'll set up Falco DiMacchio once again. Should be an easy kick here. Kick is up from DeMacchio. Kick is going to be right down Broad Street, 39 yards away. And that's a good, that was a fadeaway if you wanted to make it that way. 30 to 3 is the score. And CHP is on their way for win number six. Looking real nice, I must say. It's going to be a pitch to Misty right here, taking this one to the right side, down to around the 27 yard line. And here comes White Hill once again. They're currently down more than two possessions at the current moment. And now they're just looking for a little bit of pride here. See if they can get something going. Right side here to Koga. He's going to get to around the 35-yard line. And it's second and two coming up. Surge hitting the backfield for the sack. There goes Rivera. It's going to be third and nine on this play. White Hill 
has not been getting their offense too consistent all game long, but give credit to CHP's pass defense there. You see right there making another play, fourth and nine coming up. Going to be Ira sending this one away. Getting it to around the 30-yard line. Deshaun Booker taking this one to around the 37. CHP's back onto the field looking to add some more points and fill it up on this uh, White Hill defense who hasn't found a stop from any of these playmakers. Quick pitch left side and had to throw that one away. It's going to be second and 10. Right side incomplete right there. It's going to be third down coming up here for CHP. 19 for 35 on the day, 457. Looking for 500 yards on the day, but he's not getting it there. It's going to be fourth down and 10, and White Hill's going to get the stop they need. Macchio sent this one away close to the 20. It's going to be at least on the return, taking that to around the 25-yard line or so. And it's going to be first and 10 at the 27. White Hill does have the ball back. This rain is coming down, as you can see. Look for another handoff to Koga. He makes the first man miss, but he gets to the 30. A gain of uh, three on the play, second and seven. Surge passing this one again. Right side to Koga. He's probably going to get another three, and that's it. Third and four on this one. Looking for the conversion. The last seven minutes of this ball game. Three wide off set. Faking the hand off to Surge and deflected once again. He's going to be fourth and four. CHP's back on their game defensively. Has not found a way to get past that pass defense. It's White Hill, and they have to send it back. Missed the kick there, getting in the back around the 12-yard line and not getting too much further than that. Down to the 13, and CHP's back onto the field looking for some points. 30-3 to three at the current moment, four wide out set here. Bridges looking for a touchdown number five, but he'll take the catch up the field. A gain of around 12 on the play, first and 10. Three wide outs, one tight end again. Hand off right side, Vic Dotson. He's going to get around seven on that catch. And the second and five coming up. Faking the handoff again is Bridges. Left side, and it looked like a pass interference to me, but they're calling the holding penalty. That's going to be second and 15 on this one. Teams like this. You may not benefit for giving them another down to get 15 yards. That's a cupcake move. That's going to be Vic Dotson. He's going to get half of those yards back, essentially, and it's going to be third and nine. But as we've seen earlier in this game, nine yards is pretty easy here for this passing attack. It's going to be offsides penalty more than likely, pitching it left side and incomplete. It's going to be offsides, like I said. I knew it was going to be it. I just had a feeling. Third and four coming up here for CHP. See right there, they tried to get that first down on the last play, but could not get it. Looking for a pass right side, and they looked like that was a drop right there, but could not tell. But they did have a defender over there just to try to make sure that didn't work. And is going to have to send this one away to White Hill. Looking for some more points here is, is the Pirates have not had the greatest of games today. At least they're taking this to around the 29-yard line, and it's first and 10 White Hill. Last four minutes of the game. Hand off Koga. Looking to get a spin move going. Falls to the 34-35 yard line. And the second and four coming up. You see right there 50 yards. Uh, 50 plus yards on the day for Koga. And he's going to get hit in the backfield. Thanks to Leonard. And it's going to be third and five coming up. I believe they will start heading into two uh, possession territory. Um, actually, two minute drill where they start speeding it up a little bit, and that's going to be incomplete. Will they go for it here? Yes, they will. Looking for the conversion on this play, surge right side and off the hands of the receiver. Not quite the um, 
receiving core that we've seen all season long with a lot of drops here from White Hill. And it's going to be first and 10 coming up for White Hill trying to take to the right side as Frost. Don't think they're going to be passing it too much uh, from here on out. But Frost does want to get some more yards on the day. Keep it going. Hand off again to Frost. He's going to get another couple of yards on that one. And it's going to be third and six coming up. And it's going to be Frost hitting the backfield for the loss. There goes Brock with his onyx doing his thing. And they'll have to set up for a field goal here around 47 yards. Looking to make it a 30-point deficit. And Demacchio sends this one up and a little bit short. Unfortunate from 48. And they'll make it. A, they'll keep it at a 30-3 to game. Whitehill still has to show that they're able to move the ball down the field. They haven't done that quite yet. Surge left side. Into the bucket, but bounces off of the bucket. Second and 10. Also known as the pass looked good, but did not work out for him. And here comes Lieutenant Surge looking for another pass here. Deep left side. Actually, not that deep, but it's still incomplete there. Third and 10 coming up. CHP's two stops away from burning this clock like they want to. Going to be surge passing again. Left side caught by Misty. They'll move the chains. They'll call their last time out here. And it's going to be up to them. See if they could put the first touchdown on the board. It's going to be a two wide out set. They do have their tight end as well. Surge passing this left side. And then double coverage. It's incomplete once again. Second and 10 coming up. Three wide out set here for surge. Looking for a man. Toss in the middle of the field and looked like a miscommunication there because he had a man wide open. Third and 10 coming up. White Hill once again. You see the erratic play from Surge and the gang when they are down. That is their uh, issue. Usually late in late game situations, they can't get the job done. But you see Clay right there skying over two defenders. Good job from White Hill getting into the red zone. But... They still have to score. Let's see what they can do. Left side's open. Koga gets inside the 20, down to the 15, and they got 40 seconds to work, work with. No timeouts. Surge again. Look for a man right side. Caught by Clay. That's a touchdown right there for Mile High. Good job from getting onto the board. But will they get the victory? You can put that as a hard no in my book there. Kick is up. And the kick is good. White Hill does put points up on the board. The first touchdown in quite a bit. But it's going to be a 30-10 to 10 ball game. They're going to set up for the uh, onside kick. And Bugsy sends this one away. Picked up by CHP. And that should wrap this ball game up. So good job overall from CHP to get the victory. We could go ahead and talk about the final game of the evening. It's going to be uh, number four versus number three on this one. OCSU came off a big victory last week to beat Mile High University. But now they got to travel to East Agusa to play against the Blue Lobsters. Can't wait to see that one. Make sure you look out for that. It's coming real soon. But we're going to talk about these statistics really fast. Final score, 30-10 to 10 in favor of CHP. Good job overall offensively. You see what they're doing here. They both pretty much had similar passing stats in regards to the completion. One's 20 for 40, the other 22 for 42. So pretty similar there. Only thing is, Sean Bridges led the way with four touchdowns, two Lieutenant Surges, one. So got to keep that going there. Going into the team leaders, uh, Frost didn't have too much rushing-wise. They didn't rush the ball until they were pretty much over the game. Vic Dotson with a 200-yard day. Receiving seven catches, um, three tackles. Sorry, if I have three tackles. We probably did have some tackles, but three touchdowns on the day. Good job from him. Chad two times, got five for 61. We'll talk about the rest of the receiving crew in a little bit. Um, you got Pablo Sanchez Jr. with 10 tackles, one sack. Uh, Juju Moore, uh, Jonathan Leonard, and Booker doing their thing on the defensive end. John two times, also getting four tackles. Good job. Um, going into the team stats, once again, White Hill had the advantage, but when you're doing one-hitter quarters like CHP has been doing, don't really need the amount of plays, but total yards is what you want to look at here, 472 to 250, 
Overall, White Hill did their best in regards to getting the pass game going. It came out a little bit late, but even then, they still didn't amount to half the amount of yards passing that CHP did. So that's just the power of the CHP passing offense that you got to look out for. There are ways to stop that for the other defensive, uh, not defensive, but uh, there are the there are defensive ways to slow down the passing game and make it ineffective. But one, you got to make sure you have players that are updating, and two, you got to make sure that you do a certain thing to your um, what's the word I'm looking for? A certain thing to your strategies to actually get your players into the position. And hint is it is in one of those uh, main defensive uh, strats that you put in. So feel free to ask me if you have any questions with regards to that. I can see if I can help you out as well. So going into the receiving side of things, we already talked about Vic Dotson. He's doing this thing. What else is new? Um, Isaiah Fowler, two for 32 on the day. We already talked about Chad two times, five for 61. And then you got uh, Cameron Frost. Only took was one catch. All he needed was one catch, and he took it to the house for 94 yards. That could be their biggest play of the season as well. So big up, big ups to him. Brian Taylor had one for 14, had a few targets, but he did drop the two of the two of the four. So yeah, that's going to be it for that. Going into the defensive side of things, Pablo Sanchez Jr. had 10 once again. Juju Moore five tackles on the day. John two times had four. Uh, Fowler had three. Booker had three. Um, Jesse or Danny to go. So John Fowler, two deflections as well. Didn't I say that? Juju Moore had five pass deflections. Jonathan Leonard had a couple. Um, trying to see if there's anything else. Nope. Uh, she has Sugiyoto doing her thing uh, with one deflection, two tackles. First game on the field. Good job. Um, see Brian Taylor doing his thing with a tackle. A.B. Johnson had a tackle and a tackle for loss. Carter doing his thing as well. Waters uh, defense alignment. So we'll go ahead and wrap this one up here. We got the main event of the evening. It's going to be our night game, our game, our name of the evening, our game of the evening, whatever you want to call it. Orange County State University travels to East Augusta to take on the Blue Lobsters. It's going to be a real good one here. Nice defensive battle. Some real good running play, some real good passing play as well. So I can't wait to see how this one goes down. But until then, I'll go ahead and get set up in just a little bit for our final game of the evening. And I'll go ahead and see you then. Let's get to it. <laughs> 